Get ready for Buzz TV adventure. Exploring and discovering exciting destinations. We are in one of five galleries at the Vero Beach Museum of Art, speaking with James Prosek. You're the artist who is opening an exhibit here at the museum. What's the exhibit all about? Well, I think you can see there's some fish around. <laughs> the exhibition is uh, paintings of uh, different Atlantic Ocean fishes that I, I painted for a particular project that started in 2004 to paint. Um, it amounted to 35 different Atlantic fishes, life size, so, and they're all based on individual fish that I traveled to see. So they're, as opposed to painting a fish, like illustration size to represent a species in a field guide, I wanted to paint them life size when they are in their full living colors, right when they come out of the water or underwater, um, to, to express to people that these are individual creatures like us that have, you know, scabs and scars from their own experiences and, and, and hopefully get people more invested in conserving them in, a, in a, maybe a different kind of way. <laughs> so, so far it seems like the reaction people have to the work is uh, one of delight almost. Oh, that's really nice to hear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always loved fish since I was a little kid and they've always filled me with wonder. I mean, first of all, they live in an element that we can't really access so that makes them mysterious um, the water is mysterious oceans mysterious we still don't know you know the most of the life history of a lot of these fish like swordfish and I don't think anybody's seen ever witnessed swordfish spawning or things like that so it's you know it's a way to kind of access a creature that's not really that accessible to we're, us. We're going to take a look at um, some of the individual pieces in a, in a few minutes, but um, you said the project began about 10 years ago? Well, it began, yeah, 2004 was the first really big, well, life-size large ocean fish that I painted. I'd, I'd done a couple books painting um, watercolors of trout, which was a childhood obsession, documenting diversity of trout. But this, the bluefin tuna over here was, I went out, I'd met this guy who was um, spotted tuna from airplanes, his airplane in the summer for a commercial harpoon fisherman in Cape Cod Bay. So they spot the tuna by air, they tell the boat where the fish is. It doesn't seem fair. Well, it's pretty amazing. It, if I hadn't seen it, it takes so much skill, I mean, to throw a spear at a 700 pound bluefin tuna. Oh, it was the part about uh, spotting yeah, it from the air. It, that, that definitely, that also takes takes skill though. <laughs> Not everybody can do it. it. It is a little unfair. If he was spotting it for a, a purse seining boat that was catching 300 at a time, that, that I have a problem with. But this is a pretty uh, small scale fishery. But, but still, it was, so I went up in the plane. I'm only looking at it from the yeah. tuna's perspective. <laughs> it's, not, it's not quite that fair, yeah. Not as fair as catching it with a bamboo or pole. <laughs> yeah. But in any case, it, I, uh, I spent five days with the fishermen, and at the end, the last hour of the last day, I saw them harpoon two fish about 800 pounds. And I was like, wow, these things are so amazing. I, I want to show that, I want to paint it not like on a 19 by 24 piece of paper, but life size. So I rolled out a big piece of paper and I painted. So that was the first one in 2004. You, you didn't roll out the piece of paper on the deck of the boat, no, did you? No, no, back home. I took, I took a, a ton of photographs. I made sketches and measurements, but it's really the memory of being there from, with the fish that's, you know, very important for me. Uh, that, that actual moment when you fir when the fish first comes out of the water is th really the moment that you're trying to capture. Well, it is because I feel like in our legacy as predators on the planet, that that moment that the fish first leaves its element and enters ours is a critical moment in our hi in our history. And it it's when you see fish underwater, you don't really see their full coloration either. It's when they're lit by the sun that you see that interaction between you know, our solar system beyond ourselves and this fish on the planet Earth. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all, from color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty 
at 770-1521. Or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vero Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach Monday through Saturday for all of your furniture needs. Uh, most of the pieces are behind glass. This one in back of us is not. Why is this one not behind glass? Well, because um, they don't make a plexiglass commercially larger than about 12 feet. So a custom, you'd probably have to have a custom piece of plexiglass made and that would cost like $30,000. And in addition to that, once it's framed like that swordfish, it's, it's just really hard to transport. But a, a, also, I finished it like a week ago, so there wasn't time to... <laughs> well, well, this is... It would be nice one day if it was framed, but... Come on over and just, just tell us a little bit more about this particular piece. Sure. Well, this, I went uh, last summer... Um, I, I'd met years ago this guy named Greg Skomel, who has, works for the Massachusetts Department of Fish and Game, and he... Um, he, he studies sharks, <laughs> and around 2004, these white sharks started showing up in Cape Cod because the seal population had rebounded with the Marine Mammal Protection Act, I think. There's like 30,000 seals now in Cape Cod. So these white sharks have been coming there in the summer to feed on them. And I, I ran into Greg somewhere, and he's like, hey, you should come out on the boat this summer. There's a lot of people that want to get out on the boat now, cause, and they have a spotter plane. Actually, the same guy that I went up with in 2004 to spot the tuna was in the air spotting, not to catch them, but just to study them. So, so I went out last July 30th because I wanted to paint a fish, a shark, life-size. Um, and I wanted to see it just so it was in keeping with... Um, we, it didn't come out of the water, but um, so... The, the spotter plane spotted one and we followed it around off and on for about half an hour which was just an amazing experience. The fish, you know, was close to the surface, it finned a couple times, exposed its dorsal fin. It was only a couple hundred yards off Nosset Beach. And how, how aware of you and, and the boat and the activity above the water do you think the shark was? Well, I think he was probably aware but didn't really seem to be bothered that much. <laughs> he was just kind of like moseying along and and they had two poles with GoPro cameras on, you know, getting underwater video of the fish. And I was taking pictures from the surface. This particular fish was, is a, about a 12 and a half foot male that has been tagged with an acoustic tag. It doesn't mean they can follow it around everywhere, but they get a reading when it goes by a buoy. But the top of his dorsal fin was completely bit off. So, I, I mean, at the top of his tail fin. So I didn't paint him exactly as he is, but but uh, I wanted to paint a mature white shark, a, re a sexually reproductive shark, and males apparently become sexually reproductive at 11 feet, and females not until they're 14 feet. So this is a modest-sized white shark. It'd be fun to paint like a 16-foot female. <laughs> this, is, this is the, as I'm sure you know, and people keep reminding you, is the anniversary of the movie Jaws. Oh, is, it is, really. Nice. Oh, come on. Don't no, am, no. am I telling you that for the first Which time? Which anniversary? Like I think it's the 40th, I think. Wow. We're, we're dating ourselves. Five. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I, it's funny because I completed this May 23rd. Uh, this year on my 40th birthday, and it's the biggest fish I've ever painted. But what, what were you going to ask about, Jaws? Oh, <laughs> not, not just if that had something to do no, with the, no. the current exhibition, but it's news to you. So. Yeah, no, it's news to me. Yeah, and I could ask, you know, where have you been keeping yourself? But out and out at sea, studio. Yeah. <laughs> your studio or out at sea, one or the other. What was the hardest part about painting this this fish? Um, you know, uh, that's a good question. Um, there's always challenges with the actual execution of a work, but I'd put so much thought into making it before I'd actually put a pencil on the paper that I'd kind of planned it out in a way. So the challenges were really 
going out to see the fish and then the the scientist loaded a hard drive with like 6,000 photos of white sharks he's taken over the years and I just looked at a lot of images to kind of get a sense of what these things look like. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with dachshund reading. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. No. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. I'm just looking around and all of them, and, and we'll get some shots of the others, um, but all of them seem to have the same or similar um, background to them. And what, what was the, cho what choice, how did you come to choose that particular color for the background? Yeah, the tuna, the first one I did is on just white paper, but then I, a lot of these fish have a lot of silvery colors and white colors and I felt like they would show up better on a darker ground, so mm -hmm. in probably maybe around 2006 or something I started staining the paper with tea so I make a big pot of tea and I you know brush the tea I put a couple coats of tea on it so as eco-friendly as you eco could get friendly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just just for myself and, and, and looking at this I, what, what I'm noticing is the, the the darkness of the top and and for me that that is, is sort of indicative of what it would look like underwater the, the, yeah, the I mean they're pretty in, in contrast to to the lightness. Of yeah, them. they're pretty they're pretty dark. It depends on the water they're in, and they change all the time. But I I have seen pictures of them out of the boat when they're putting these satellite tags on them, and they're probably more grayish. But this is a painting, and I have I, a little bit of liberty. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I probably heighten the contrast just because it just makes it more dramatic to me. So again, it's it's an interpretation. I would say even more than of the fish, it's an interpretation of an experience with this fish. So I, having been there and seen it, I am still carrying the, the wonder that I felt when I saw that thing. And it, it's, um, I can't kind of underestimate that, the memory of being there with the fish and seeing it you know, come out of the water. And, and each one of these fish has a story. The other aspect of it that strikes me is the illusion of the water along the belly of the fish. Well, that's, I, I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> I mean, there's obviously that aqua, uh, that aqua marine. Well, and also the, the splashing up of the water. Yeah, I mean, the, that, that color is not on the fish, but it, it reflects the environment. These fish, a lot of them are like swimming mirrors. So mm -hmm. even in some of them, I painted my own reflection, like in the eyeball of the fish, like the swordfish, you can see the rigging of the boat. And you can also see like the highlight on the eye. Mm -hmm. is the sun. That's, that's the, the star that keeps all of us alive is reflected in the eyeball of that fish and it acknowledges that we're in a solar system traveling you know around whatever we're orbiting and however many thousands of miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not just about us here or a shark or a, an oyster. It's about the interconnectedness of all these things together, you know, um, your planets and us and the rivers and the oceans and what we do in, in our backyards and in, in the, you know, what we dump in our rivers affects the ocean. Everything, you know, is, is, um, is connected. So you've been, you've been doing Atlantic fish mm -hmm. and, and there is that, and the oceans are connected. You, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you've yeah. ignored the Pacific, any well, particular reason? Well, just because I, I grew up on the Atlantic in Connecticut, so it's, 
It's what I could access more easily. But I'm originally from Danbury, Connecticut. <laughs> okay, I'm from Easton, which is same county, Fairfield. Yeah, no, I know Danbury. Well. My sister-in-law is from Easton. Nice. We we could be related. We could be. Yeah. We could be. <laughs> let's, let's step right over here. Okay, and, and sure. Look at um, a couple of these others. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what have we got going? On? This is a this is called a Nassau grouper, and I. I saw these in the Bahamas. This this fisherman was actually fishing for them illegally while they were, you know, the Bahamas kind of parts of it's pretty lawless, but this was Andros Island. And they were setting traps for them in, where they're aggregating to spawn. So this is a big pregnant female and they're just amazing fish. Nassau grouper are pretty, becoming pretty endangered in the Caribbean and stuff because they're easy to catch and they're really good to eat. So people have been overfishing them for a long time. And they're they're also like, very friendly if you're diving, so you can swim right up to them and spear them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they're gorgeous fish. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all, from color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. Advertise your business on Buzz TV. Email buzztvnetwork at gmail.com or call 772-777-1382. This is um, a red snapper that I, I caught, um, and my friend might have caught it, but we were catching them all day <laughs> off of um, Cumberland Island, Georgia. So Amelia Island, Florida, and not, not you know, too far from here. Um, and they're, they're just an extraordinary looking f fish. Um, and they're also good to eat, but I think at that point they were, there was a moratorium on them, so we had to let them all go. Um, unfortunately, you drag them up from deep water and sometimes they don't, make it because their air bladders can't adjust in time but um, and this is a mutton snapper that I I caught on the same trip as the the grouper to um, Andros Island in the Bahamas. How many fish species have you painted? Well I have no idea and <laughs> that there's a that's a problematic I mean it's a difficult question to answer it's actually kind of unanswerable because um, especially with these trout that I was fascinated with as a kid, biologists can't agree on how many species there are because the whole enterprise of taking nature, which is fluid and continuous and interconnected and constantly... And trying to put it into boxes. Trying to chop it into pieces and put language on it is not... It's not reality. It's not... It's actually against the way nature works. I'm, I'm writing a whole book about this. Um, about um, the failure of names is, is part of the title. And it's about how language and nature don't mix. How our most powerful tool is incapable of, of describing the beauty and diversity of the planet. It, you can, I mean, you can use metaphor and stuff. So painting the, is another form of communication. Maybe it's not a language, but it's, um, so that question of how many species there are, I have a, a huge problem with the, the term species. I think that if there was a way to get rid of it, I would. <laughs> but it's it's so ingrained, it's just like, Our, uh, but yeah, a white shark's not gonna mate with a bluefin tuna, but. Not but, often. But we are, at, we're actually more closely, humans are more closely related to some fish mm -hmm. than some fish are to other fish. On the evolutionary tree, I think we're more closely related to lungfish than lung, lungfishes are to sharks, so. Um, does that mean that we sh maybe should be called fishes also? We could easily, all mammals could be called fishes and that would be fairly accurate. There but was a time in my life when I was going to be a marine biologist. Okay. <laughs> but that was, seems like two or three lives ago. Uh, uh, Hustar cameraman is a fisherman and there are a lot of avid fishermen uh, in Florida. Florida, Indian River County on the Treasure Coast. Do you get just some avid sportsmen that fall in love with your paintings and want one of them for themselves? Well, I mean, I have to admit that, like, 
my my the beginning of my career I was studying to become an architect in college and then I was lucky enough to find a publisher to do this book of paintings on the trout in North America that I've been working on since I was 12 years old <laughs> and because of that book it it did well enough that I thought maybe I can keep writing and painting but the people that sustained my early career were the kind of people you're talking about fishermen who wanted a picture of a trout for their and it was a great way for me to you know fund my trips and my uh, my writing and, and book projects because you don't make a lot of money writing books. You, you, you would have at that time considered that to be commercial art. What do you consider this no, today? It wasn't, it wasn't, to me it wasn't like, I wasn't doing it, I was doing it because I loved it and I, I wasn't just like pumping out paintings of trout. <laughs> I, can, I can only make so many so it's like these, these are, they're, they're labors of love and I don't think we'll find a, necessarily a patron for a 15-foot painting of a white shark. Well, but, I, well, but I wanted to I ask... I'd like to see a work like this that I put right. so much months of work into. I love to see that, that work end up in an institution like a museum or something where it will be cared for. And I, it, to me, it's not about the money at all. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't use this one. He helps me with my decision making. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Is this your first exhibit here in Vero Beach? Yes, it is. I, I spoke here at a Florida conference for the arts and sciences like two years ago. And then, but I knew at that point we were already working on the exhibition. So yes, I've, this is the first time I've had an exhibition in Vero Beach, yeah. And, and the museum itself, how, is that, how does this do justice or not do justice to your work? I love these spaces. These, um, these two spaces where the works are hanging, um, this is, I just walked in to see the installation, I, the, the curator and the, you know, other people put the works up and, and we conceived of the thing together, but um, when I walked in the far side, uh, you know, the long, there's a long distance view, I mean, yes. it's, well, it's probably like 200 feet to the end of that. <laughs> yes, you can, you can see this piece yeah, that, from, from a, a football field away. And I can't hang that in my studio and get that feeling, so it's, it's so it was really, um, wonderful to me to see that, <laughs> especially this long view because it, it's just, I, I think, I, so I do, I love, I love the museum, I think it's a beautiful museum, yeah. I was told, I, I was, think it's great that there is an art museum here. <laughs> for sure. I, I was told in preparation for today that you are an accomplished artist. How does one measure one's accomplishment yourself uh, as an artist? Well, that's uh, obviously a, a kind of a, yeah, I don't know. I I would hesitate to call myself accomplished at anything, but I I'm, I would say I'm a dedicated artist. Um, other people can measure the accomp the level of accomplishment, but I'm I'm dedicated to my craft and and I really enjoy um, what I do, uh, the painting, and I see the writing that I do in books as part of my process and of my art making, but. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, uh, as far as accomplishment, <laughs> it's, it, it's a nice accomplishment to see this work in a space hanging up and to have people, you know, to be able to have a conversation with people like you about the work because I learn about the whole thing even more. I learn more about um, what I'm trying to do when I have to articulate it. <laughs> I, I think what you're trying to say is that although, the, although you may not consider yourself accomplished, you do consider yourself accomplishing, which is a yes. continual yes. process. I like that. I like that. It doesn't, 
it doesn't put an end, it doesn't box it. You know, if I, I would never, I don't like the word success or accomplish. I don't know any of these, any you're labels not, you're are- You're not done yet. Right? I'm not done yet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also I, I like, yes, I, I work very hard. I, 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 um, I put in a lot of hours at it, so accomplishing is maybe more accurate, yeah. <laughs> and when uh, uh, Husto and I walked in, uh, there were some other uh, media people with you, some reporters, photographers. What, and I was, and I couldn't hear because right, right, right. there's an echo in the room, and I was trying to think of, gosh, what am I going to ask? What did they ask of you? Well, one woman was uh, focused on... Um, you know how many of these fish died in the process of making the paintings and you know some did but I I was on a commercial boat where they're gonna kill the fish anyway this white shark was never touched by us we watched it swim other ones I'm not ashamed to say that I caught them and ate them it's just I don't I'm not against I'm not against that what I am there are certain things I am against though large-scale industrial fishing long lining purse seining I just don't think it's it's they're raping our oceans and it's there's no other way to put it it's just it's it's just uh, it's horrifying and I don't think the people who are going out and catching a fish to eat are are doing any harm Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics in downtown Vero Beach. Owner Patty Callahan prints it all, from color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. I believe strongly in having that connection with with an animal and if it if it turns a kid into a conservationist catching a fish and having that just just having it close to and being able to hold it in your hands is just a the kind of experience that you can't replicate doing anything else. How much of your work by design or by accident um, ends up creating a greater awareness among people of issues facing our oceans? These paintings are like, I see them partly as quiet conservation statements. They're not pounding people with statistics about what we're losing. They're just showing, it's like, here it is. This is what we're, what we're at, the, there's a threat of losing this beauty and diversity on the planet. Um, the, I can say that like I've watched some of the influence that some of my early works have had because I've had enough years to watch that. And the first trout book that I put out there, there just hadn't been a book on all the trout of North America. And I think when you, when you put it all in a book and, or you present it to the public and you, you show what's there, if you don't kind of order it for them and make it digestible, they can't, they can't grasp what's there. But that's allowed people to say, oh, there's a, there's a, a Bonneville cutthroat trout that needs protection, or there's a golden trout in California that needs protection. Just somehow putting it all in one place. Um, so I think that that project had some kind of influence in trout conservation, or at least I'd like to think so, um, in North America. But it's hard to measure influence, you know, because it, it seeps into the world. And, and we all influence everything else every day that goes by. <laughs> you've, been, you've been doing this uh, work for quite a while uh, and uh, just in a closing moment, do you still see the beauty in these fish? Oh yeah, absolutely. And like I see the beauty in fish that a lot of people think are ugly like eels. I spent 12 years writing a book about freshwater eels and I, I cannot stop being amazed by the migrations these fish make. They live, they spend 15 to 30 years in fresh water and they're, then they go to spawn in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean in the Sargasso Sea, this whirlpool out there east of Bermuda. And then the adults spawn and die and the young come back up the rivers. And I, I just, it's mind blowing that these fish travel so far and do what they do and we have no clue how they do it and we've never witnessed them spawning and I think that's kind of beautiful and remarkable but no the wonder will never die <laughs> not not from me what no. you do, just described is a, a spectacular um, life cycle actually we we've got to go but I I would uh, profoundly invite anyone watching to come here to the Vero Beach Museum yeah. of Art to get a 
close-up look of your work well, at your work. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank I you. I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah.